our fearless leader, Mark Chernoff, who has been the program director here for 28 years. I thought it's I was only 29 years old, so I don't know. <laughs> it's <Something's amazing>. not right. <laughs> You're a prodigy. Yeah. You're a child genius. Mm. Uh, is here because this is your, your last day at the station. This is, is not your last day in radio or media, but this is your last day at WFAN, and it's been like one big celebration. What does this feel like? Um, it's very humbling to, to me. Yeah. You know, I, I, I remember, you know, when I started out full-time up in Sussex County working at a little radio station called WNNJ. And uh, it's progressed, you know, all these years being in New York radio and stuff, just things I never anticipated. Getting to be a jock for many years on music stations like NEWFM when it was a rock station, K-Rock, working with people like Howard Stern, Scott Muni, and just so many others. <clears throat> and then coming over to Fan and Imus and Mike and the Mad Dog and just, you know, everybody, you guys. And, you know, if I sat here and started naming names, it's like, okay, you missed me, you missed me. But um, Mario, it's really been amazing. What do you you know? What do you think? You know all the all the success you've had as a PD, right? Mm -hmm. And this is not the end, obviously. But mm -hmm. what do you think? What do you think led to? What made you such a successful programmer in all your different spots, but specifically here at WFAN? Um, Recognizing I, good talent like us. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, well, you know what? That that's true. Um, is I love working with people. Yeah, and I love working with talent. And the idea is <clears throat> not, I try not to overmanage. Um, you guys know what you're doing. And that's one of the things in hiring people. Sometimes when people are starting out, they certainly need more direction. But with good talent, they kind of know what to do and how to do it. And the idea is to do tweaking. And it's like, what can I do? Do you need anything? And I think you found that through the years. No I doubt. Hope, that no doubt. It's, you know, I, I try Sometimes, not. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 the the thing that I appreciate most is the honesty. You know, you would, you know, it wasn't a case that you were on top micromanaging, but when you needed to say something, you made a point of saying it, giving direction and uh, and and helping somebody grow on the air and uh, and being able to grow as a talent on the air. Yeah, and the idea was not to do it every day because if you sit here and say do this, do that, then people don't listen. Yeah, um, and sometimes I was telling the guys this morning that I learned an awful lot from Howard Stern. Um, here was a guy who could do 20 minute commercial breaks and people would still listen. Of course. Because you were afraid you were going to miss something. And if our talent could do the same thing, you know, that's why whether you're teasing the next segment, whether you're just making each segment stand alone and make it so that people want to hear that and they want to come back and hear the next segment. You know, we run commercials. That's no surprise. Right. You need to pay the talent and pay for the building and the heat and the lighting and everything else. That's the way it is. It's not going to change, but we connect with people that we want them to hear what you guys have to say. We want them to be able to say what they want to say on the radio station. So to me, it's all about people and it's all about listening. Those well, are the two things. And that's why like, this is such a unique place to work, but also such a great opportunity. And that's what people say all the time and why you're getting thanked left and right, because this really is something where there's a lot of places where people yakety yak about sports, but the WFAN matters, matters to people. And it matters to us. It's a huge part of people's lives. It is a national brand, even though it's a local market. And it, everything about it just makes it just it's unlike anything else in sports. And you have a lot of people here who have worked here their entire lives, you know, like straight out of college. Like Moose was an intern here and kept going. You have people like me who worked other places and came here and you understand how special it is and just how much, you know, you get taken into the fold. OK, that's the niceties. We're applying pressure to you right now because it's your last day. So what the hell do you have to lose? You're starting a radio station from scratch. Who's the first person you are hiring? Well, if he's available, Howard Stern. All right. Well, good I guess answer. that's kind of an easy one. <laughs> <Good answer. laughs> How about no one's going to dispute that. No, 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 okay. no one's <laughs> disputing that. WFAN, past or present? <laughs> no, I, I'm not. I, you know, the, I'm, I'm not ranking people. I don't think it's just fair. the first. This no. is like our sports talk conversation. If you're starting an NBA franchise, who do you want? It's not. It's not fair. It's not fair. It's okay There's for you too to many have people to, I, I to, love. to recognize I, that some people that you that you have preferences. It's, it's not. not that you it's don't not like even a matter. It's not even a matter of preference. I loved working with Imus here, yeah. obviously, and Mike and the Mad Dog were game changers. 
So if they were still together, there, there's not been anybody like them. There have been people who've tried to be like them. You know, and I've told other people, if, when you're a team, there's Mike and the Mad Dog. And there's what you do. Don't be Mike and the Mad Dog. And around the country, you know, Mike and Chris would tell you, oh, this one's, they're trying to be like us. They're trying to be like us. <laughs> of course. Everybody is different. No doubt. Um, but they were the difference makers in sports radio because they're had never been a show like theirs. Well, they created like a paradigm that is actually not replicate. You can't replicate it, but people well, thought they could, right. you know, but, but like the two people sitting there, you know, it was like that. Okay. Um, who do you enjoy listening to the most mm. or who have you enjoyed listening to the most over the years? I mean, I just enjoy listening to the radio station all the time. So, yeah. and I do, as most people know. Oh, you listen. Oh, I know. When I was doing you know, overnights, whether, whether, I get I get emails whether, at four thirty in the yeah, morning. Yeah, day, and I just like to hear what's going on, and yeah. I like to hear everybody's take. Everybody does it differently. So, you know, what you guys do is different from what Steve Summers does. Well, and, nobody can do what Schmooze does. And and you know what Mike and Chris did was different from what I miss. But I just I love radio. I, you know, sometimes like, what's your hobby? My hobby is radio. Yeah, you love it. Mark, what, <sighs> you mentioned about Howard, right? What you took uh -huh. away from Howard. What, you, I miss legend, right? So, what did you take away working with, with, uh, with Don? Well, it's the same thing, you know, especially early on, um, the preparedness, the working with the team, you know, Charles McCord and Rob uh, Bartlett, Larry Kenny and Bernard and the various Lou, people we, yeah. Lou, um, just, you know, working with everybody and seeing how he managed the whole group. And that included the production people like Joey DeFazio back in the day. Oh, Joey. And Paul Arzuma and yes, Zach yeah. who came along after that. Um, it was really amazing how he was able to run things and what he did and how he understood segments and understood how to keep people listening. And he was the king of um, knowing how to promote another segment. You know, here's what's coming up next. Here's what's coming up tomorrow at this time. And I think Mike would tell you that he learned to do that from Imus. Mm. You know, so Imus, in his own way, was a teacher. Um, and, you know, he was, you know, truly an amazing guy. You know, radio talent and hosts and that's just the personalities are big. You know, it's just it's it, it's, the, it's the medium and everyone is just bring something real. Like, have you noticed a common thread between radio personalities. I'm not saying that, you know, they're the same. I'm just saying, is there a common theme between people who really excel at this and those who don't? Well, yes, you have to not be shy. You have to be able to express an opinion and you really have to be entertaining. Um, if you can do all those things and you have to have an ego. I think some program directors and just people say, oh, big ego. I said, yeah, big ego. <laughs> That's what we want. I mean, you know, you have to manage yourself to some degree knowing that. But one of the reasons I think you're doing it is you have an ego and say, I can do this. I'm good at it. And I want people to know what my opinion is. And I'm willing to listen to what other people have to say as well. But I that's think always fun e for the program director. It's OK. Uh, you know, it's it's fine. It's part of what radio is. And it's a, it's a challenge I accepted. And, you know, back in the in the music days with the jocks I worked with, you know, they were talented doing music because you're, there was a period of time, especially at progressive rock stations, where the jocks picked the music. Mm -hmm. You know, I know a lot of that changed through the years, but when I was the program director at NEW, um, you know, I left some leeway in there for the jocks to pick music, whether it was, you know, Scott or or, or Richard Neer or Dennis Elsus, Pete Fornatel, Pat St. John, you know, right. just wonderful people that I worked with. And again, I start naming names and then you skip a bunch of names. It's like, how come you didn't name me? Well, Mark, is <laughs> I there, think you get a pass Dan today. Richard's yeah. Brother? Yeah, yeah, I think exactly. you get a pass. Is there, is there a moment, not, you know, not ask you for your, your greatest moment as a program, but is there, you love radio, you uh -huh. love what you do. Is there a moment in your career where, you know, that love affair was cemented with radio? Um, there, were, there were different times and depended on where, where I worked. And, and the radio station. I mean, doing a remote up in Newton, New Jersey at the Sussex County Farm and Horse Show and even just having 25 people standing around you was like, wow, people are really listening. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was Not telling the you story this morning. the hundreds of thousands morning, of people who are listening no, to our voices right now. Watching Mike and Chris, yeah. um, you know, at, at Rutgers before a big game and, you know, three, four, five thousand people. Rutgers, Louisville. Yeah, it was unbelievable the, the amount of people that cared what they were doing. 
that afternoon into the early evening. It was just, and the 19, I mean, sorry, the 2000 World Series, which I also mentioned, Mets and Yankees. And, you know, being outside at Shea Stadium and the thousands of people that congregated by whatever gate we were at, you know, just to see Mike and Chris. Um, you know, when some of the remotes Imus did, and it's interesting, we used to go on these tours all the time to take the, the Imus show, which was national as well as obviously on in New York, around the country. And I got the experience of being in all these cities. But we'd go to a place like Bangor, Maine, and there'd be 5,000 people in the auditorium. That's the whole city. Or Branson, Missouri, and, and one of those theaters there, and there'd be four or 5,000 people, whatever. And it was like, wow. I mean, it's, you, you could just see how important people, and the, and the stuff that Howard did, and the you know tens of thousands of people that would come to see him live and the events that he did. And it was, you know, at NEW, we used to do a, um, a big uh, beach party on the Friday before Memorial Day, um, and there'd be 80,000, 90,000 people. And it wasn't me making up this number because mm-hmm. I would look and there'd be the sea of people yeah. out there on the boardwalk. And, you know, the Asbury Park Press, the local paper would say, kid, nobody went to school that Friday. The schools <laughs> were empty. And they'd show these pictures and it was just wall to wall people. It was amazing. What was the moment where, yeah. or if maybe there was more than one, where, you know, because radio is. It's entertaining and it can be outrageous at times. And you work with outrageous people where you're like, I can't like this is my life. I can't believe this is my life. This is ridiculous. What's going on? Did you ever have that moment? Not in that sense. Mm -hmm. Um, I just feel blessed to have worked with so many talented people that, wow. You know, when I was working in Newton, New Jersey, it's just kind of me and talking to, you know, a few people in Sussex County and then moving on to these bigger radio stations and seeing the power that radio stations have. And really, even in small markets like Newton and then in Dover, uh, when I was at a rock station, WDHA, there was a power to all of these stations. There were loyal listeners. There were people who call in and how much they loved the station. It's really been especially true at FAN because we've hopefully gotten, of got a lot of people through 9-11, got a lot of people through Sandy and other things that were going on. We've always been a station that... When appropriate, we don't have to talk sports. We need to talk life. You guys, you know, did a, an especially wonderful job, especially in the early days of the pandemic. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Whether you Thinking had the governor on, on whether you had um, the, the doctor from Winds, mm. um, whoever it was, Dr. you know, McDonough. yeah, just handling that. Between stuff. him and Phil Murphy, I think yeah. we talked yeah. to them more than our own families. Yeah. Because you're you're feeling what everybody else is feeling, and if you can express that and get that out to people, you know, they're going to feel those things as well and feel like. You know, radio has always been that that place where people go because you have a friend. Mm-hmm. And we still provide that service. And on local radio in particular, and certainly on some of the national brands where you do get to talk to people, um, you know, we provide that for people. We're a companion. We're not just, you know, a music box. And there's value to that as well, but it's a different kind of value. But the thing we offer, that's why we've become a fabric over the years of New York. It's in the whole New York market. Without a doubt. Well, Mark, I mean, listen, uh, there yeah. are... What do you want to do next, Mark? Uh, I'm going to the dentist tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I already Wait, have you're a, finally I have a, getting that? you're finally getting the tooth extracted? Yeah, That's I, no, I got that done. Now they have to do some other work. But I figured <laughs> if I planned being some... Authentic? Uh, you know what? That makes me think how pleasant my job is when I know that, okay, I'm going to go to the dentist tomorrow morning. But at least I've got an event all planned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd say you got a lot lined up. Yeah, I don't... And long term, we'll see. I mean, you know, I'm, I don't feel like I'm the retiring type. Um, so there'll be things to do. And, uh, you know, I'll do them. Well, I got to say, you know, there are it it is a privilege to sit in this chair. You are one of the people who opened this door for me. We can count on one hand how many women are doing this across the country. So I appreciate you taking a chance on me. And the fact that I've gotten to work with you has been a really great experience. Well, you've been doing a wonderful job. And Moose, you and I have worked together. 23 years, Mark. When you were a board op. And then, you know, I interned summer 98. I came back August of 2000, part-time, working weekend overnights, producing Ann Liguori's show. So I've been a producer, board op, um, update anchor on the weekends, to part-time host to now full-time host. I... I can't thank you for for and, all the opportunities. And spent a years. number of years on the network too, doing full time on CBS too, Sports so. Radio as well. Yeah. So I can't I can't thank you for all the opportunities. Uh, you've been a great boss. You've been honest when you've needed to be honest, and uh, and I'm gonna miss you. 
I'm going to miss you. And, you know, I mean, you've probably told the story some some of the time, but you guys did a Saturday morning show on CBS yeah. Sports Radio for a number of years, too. It was the Maggie Five. Show 1.0. This is 2.0. Yeah. That's it. It's great. Well, thank you, guys, and continued success. 